This reading is being done with the permission of Scholastic. Chapter 6. Friedrich was embraced by the aroma of roasted meat and cinnamon and apples. He grinned as he hung up his coat on the hall tree. Then he rubbed his hands together with anticipation. The old cuckoo clock with its carved pine cone weights hugged the wall. The tiny door framed in a wreath of lindenwood leaves and forest animals open. The cuckoo slid forward and chirped the hour. Too bad, old friend, said Friedrich. You cannot enjoy our meal. Based on what we learned earlier about Friedrich and his family, I have a prediction about what Friedrich is so excited about. When I heard about the aroma of the roasted meat and about how excited he was coming home, I'm pretty sure that Elisabeth is home. Let's keep reading to find out. In here, a voice called from the kitchen. Friedrich found father at the table and Elisabeth facing the stove, stirring something meaty with a wooden spoon. An apron was tied at her waist over a gray skirt and white blouse. Friedrich's eyes swept the small kitchen, the walnut hutch with his mother's collection of hand-painted saucers, the counter with the tin canister sitting in descending order, the window with the green shutter, and Elizabeth finally home. He rushed up behind her, put his arms around her waist, and lifted her off the floor. Friedrich, put me down! Father laughed. Friedrich released her. Did you miss me, Elisabeth? She was almost 18, taller than Friedrich, but not by much, with the same blue eyes as his and father's. Her blonde hair hung long and loose, and her dimpled cheeks were flushed pink from the warmth of the room. Fresh bread sat on a board on the table. Schwetzler rested in a pan. A strudel, dusted with sugar, cooled on the back of the stove. Friedrich reached around to tug her apron string. She dodged him, laughing, and threatened with a wooden spoon. Have you tried to scrub off a patient's birthmark with a shoe brush yet? He asked. She put her hands on her hips. Will you never forget that? I don't forget easy easily. Remember when we used to play hide and seek? And if you found me before I was safe, your reward was to bandage me like a mummy? Father nodded. Even then, you were a nurse. Last year, Elizabeth went to Stuttgart to live with their only relatives besides Uncle Gunther, mother's cousin and his wife and their daughter, Marguerite, who was in nursing school too. But now Elizabeth's last months of training would be in the local hospital with their family physician, Dr. Braun. It is good to have you home, said Friedrich, saluting. I'm ready to be ordered about. Elisabeth pointed the spoon toward a chair. Sit next to father and I'll bring you the spritzle. Father, you start. Tell me all about your last days at work and your first days as a man of golden age. I think what she means by a man of golden age is that um, the father is retired. At the kitchen table, Father talked about all the congratulations and good-natured kidding he'd taken during his last week of work and the dinners and lunches to honor him. He talked about starting a small chamber ensemble of musicians. Of course, it won't be as lively as our little performances in the parlor. I'm counting on hearing a polka on the piano later. She looked at Friedrich and rolled her eyes. What about you? Father submitted my application to the conservatory. He will perform for the jury in January. I can tell he's apprehensive, said Father. Talk to him, Elizabeth. Of course you must. It's what you've always wanted, said Elizabeth. What's your worry? Friedrich shrugged. Wasn't it clear what worried him? The jury is only eight people, said Father. It was easy for Father to say. He wasn't the one who had to stand in front of strangers and pretend there was nothing wrong with his face and perform. And if he was accepted, what then? Would he be able to sit in a classroom with students he'd never met? 
even if he could endure the furtive glances and downcast eyes, what would be the point anyway? How could he stand in front of an audience or dare to conduct an entire orchestra? The idea made his stomach churn. They will be lucky to have your talent, said Elizabeth. But and now, more than ever, Germany needs its true citizens to rise to their potential, to be shining example. Father frowned. Well, yes, that's one rationale, but I'm kind of curious. Father seems like, or Friedrich and Elisabeth's father, seems like he doesn't like what Elisabeth said. And I have a feeling as a reader that knowing that father seems to not like Hitler's regime and not like um, all that it stands for, that something about what Elizabeth said made him think about that kind of discrimination and hatred. Let's read again what she said. They will be lucky to have your talent, said Elizabeth. And now, more than ever, Germany needs its true citizens to rise to their potential to be shining examples. So this idea that there are true citizens and not true citizens, in Germany under Hitler's regime, true citizens were Christian German citizens who um, fit um, Hitler's idea of like what it meant to be like a good German. And it seems like I'm starting to get this hint or this idea that Elizabeth might be using some of that language that Hitler's been using and his followers have been using. I'm starting to get a little bit worried about Elizabeth. And what of your work at the hospital? Friedrich didn't want to talk about the conservatory and he sensed an argument brewing between father and Elizabeth. It's going well. I observed a reconstructive surgery the other day on a small boy's lip. It was thrilling. I hope to work in pediatric surgery someday. Friedrich noticed that she'd taken only a few bites of her food and had worried her napkin into a ball. Lisbeth, what's wrong? He looked from father to Friedrich. He said, Sorry, Pacho is trying to interrupt. She looked from father to Friedrich. She set down her napkin, folded her hands in front of her plate, and took a deep breath. Before uncle gets here, there's something I have to tell you both. I hope you will understand. She sat up straighter. I've been reassigned to Ber a Berlin hospital. I won't be staying in Trossingen or working with Dr. Braun. Berlin? Father's eyes twitched with disappointment. Why? It was all arranged that you'd be here. Yes, I know, said Elizabeth. I only found out a few days ago. Dr. Braun has already been notified. Friedrich stared into his place, into his plate, his heart sinking. There'd be no late night talks or passing a novel back and forth or Sunday afternoons playing Binocchio. He looked at father, not knowing if he felt worse for himself or for him. Father's face had wilted. How long can you stay? Only the weekend. I leave Monday morning on the earliest train. But we've seen so little of you. Father blinked back tears. I know this comes as a surprise, Father, and I'm sorry for that, but this position will be good for my career inside and outside the hospital. Seems like she's a very ambitious young woman. Can't you talk to someone and plead your case for Trossingen? asked Frederick. Friedrich. No, I, I requested to be reassigned. For a few moments, the only sound was the cuckoo clock ticking in the hall. Father's face wrinkled with confusion. Requested it. Why? asked Friedrich. Hadn't she wanted to be with them? 
So much has changed for me. Berlin is the center of many of my activities now. I would have told you the last time I was home, but there never seemed to be the right moment. You see, after I moved to Stutt Stuttgart, Margaret and I joined the League of German Girls. Father's head snapped back as if he'd been slapped. Elizabeth, you cannot be serious. Friedrich choked on his spritzel. You're a Hitlerite? It seems my previous thoughts about Elizabeth were correct. Elizabeth seems to have changed a lot since she left to study nursing and she seems to have taken on the ideology or the ideas and beliefs of Hitler's regime. In our next video, we will learn more about Elizabeth and her plans for the future. Um, and that will be in chapter seven. And I think we'll probably do seven through nine next time. So I hope you um, enjoyed this reading and I hope that you get an, a chance to um, do some of the extension activities that I have prepared for you. Again, there is a PowerPoint that I am linking at the bottom of our, our videos, and these are just optional activities that you can do to connect more with the text, um, including some nonfiction reading that relates to what we're learning about from the book. Have a good day.